Okay, so hello guys, welcome back to Open Foam. Uh, so in the last video, we have uh, talked about uh, running, you know, the laminar version of piezo foam, right? So we have successfully run a laminar version of piezo foam. So we have uh, we have this, and then we look at the. Okay, I'm gonna clear this out. We are log no, piezo foam. All right, so I'm gonna go all the way to the bottom. Uh, I'll just go all the way down. So colon and the max number. So you see, it's run all the way, all the way in already. It's uh, taking a bit of clock time, but whichever, whatever. Um, well, next thing, next thing I want us to take note is now the difference between, uh, yeah, we want to look not just at the uh, laminar flow, or else we'll be just the learning will stop here. We will, we want to look at the the turbulent uh, uh, version of the piezo foam as well, right? So let's take a look at not the laminar foam and laminar anymore, but we have turbulence. So there are two there are two uh, um, there are two folders for turbulent modeling. One is called the RAS folder, and one is called a LES folder. So RAS stands for like I think Reynolds average uh, something. Hold on, let me go and check. Okay, so yeah, uh, Laminar doesn't have any turbulence models. RAS uses something called Reynolds Average Stress. And LES uses Large Eddy Simulation or Detached Eddy Simulation. At least according to this thing here. So I'm not going to just elaborate on what these are just yet. No, it's good to understand how people you know come up with all these kind of models. Um, but the most basic ones we, we can start with are using the Reynolds Average Stress. And if you heard of something called K-Epsilon model, it will fall under that category. So I'm not going to explain about K-Epsilon model just yet. That's the most one of the most fundamental turbulence models. Uh, we can talk about theory a little bit later. And even then, it's going to be a very touch and go kind of thing. Because uh, if you really want to do uh, turbulent uh, flows in theory, in depth, it's going to be pretty darn uh, difficult when you have to learn about tensors and everything. Because a lot of things are in tensor notation. But don't worry about that. We're not going to touch this in this, in this video. Not to confuse you. Uh, in this video, we just want to talk about running a basic, a basic, uh, what do you call it? A basic... Uh, a basic dry run of a uh, piece of foam with the Reynolds average stress and see what are the input files needed similar to what we are doing in the last video and let's take a look at the, at the cavity again all right so again we'll do a file by file comparison first we look at the zero file and we do a list and what do we know we have a lot more things popping up so it's not just U and P now, we have Epsilon, we have K, Nu tilde, and Nut, and Omega. So what are these? Let's go and take a look first uh, into them. But before that, we want to look in all our regular ones, our regular files, see whether there's anything changed. So this is a cavity, uh, a turbulent cavity. Well, it looks like there's nothing much change here. So we are safe. Let's look in the P file. Same thing. The U and P don't really change, so that's a relief. Let's look at K first, because we talk about K epsilon model, right? So let's look at K first. It looks like these are the dimensions here. So uh, this uh, quantity K, whatever that quantity is, right? It is uh, something we will need to deal with. Now, um, again, we can do some of the theory later. Can explain a bit more about what these uh, all functions actually are talking about, but not not in this video. Yeah, we just know that there's this extra file called k, and that these these k files have these entries here, and then we have these values that are put in for some reason. So, yeah, we need to take note. We'll need to copy and paste this file over into here if we want to start turbulent uh, modeling. Okay. The next thing we look at is uh, look at is epsilon. So again, epsilon has some different value. There are some dimensions here, two and minus three. 
and we have a we have boundary conditions for h1 similar to u and p we we need to have dimensions internal field and boundary field entries so let's look at new tilde new tilde okay new tilde thankfully there's nothing much here so it just has a uniform value of zero and the boundary field is all zero nothing zero gradient zero gradient empty don't solve for that at all all right so new tilde may be called something quite out of the picture so don't worry about that let's look at nut again all zero we have a nut k wall function just make sure that we copy and paste all this over all right cause uh piece of form may need these files to run turbulent models so okay looks like this omega is quite important it says there's an internal I mean the in initial condition is an internal field of this 22.4 and our mega wall functions are as such we have a uniform to 22.4 something like that all right so these are important boundary conditions we need to take note of and we need to add them in in order for piezo form to run in a uh, what do you call that um, turbulent kind of fashion so let's look at constant so i'm going to clear this up let's look at cd constant okay so again these two files are here transport properties and turbulent properties so let's see whether the transport properties actually differ from what we were looking at previously so again transport model is newtonian new is that much so no need to worry anything about anything so there's nothing very much we need to care about. Now let's take a look at the turbulence properties. We expect something different. So the simulation type is now called RAS. Okay, so uh, this tells piezo foam that uh, we are using a Reynolds average stress model. And in this model, which which one of these Reynolds average stress models? We need to tell that it's K epsilon model. And then turbulence is on and print coefficients is on. Yep, so these are some of the setting the input files we will need for piezo form to run in turbulence mode. Okay, nothing to nothing too much difference other than that. Let's go to system. And again, these are the same for very important files, block mesh, which is pretty much the same. We're not gonna look into it again. Control it. And pretty much the same, we're not gonna look into it. Oh, and speaking of that, uh, I didn't change the application in this uh, file here, right? If you look at the system file, yeah, it's still on icoform. Yeah, that means if you run piezoform, it will still do piezoform, unless you you do the you have the special run file with which says get application with the dollar sign. Well, you don't really have to care about it, right? So other than that, all the same, no worries. All right, let's look at FV schemes and let's see whether there's any difference. Ah, now look at this. There's a lot of uh, divergent schemes now. All of these needs to be put into our FV scheme file, right? So let's take a look at FV schemes. You notice that in the divergence schemes, now you have a divergence of phi u, phi k, phi epsilon, omega, blah, 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 blah. All these need to be put here into these divergence schemes. Other than that, all everything else is pretty much the same. See? It's just a few lines more code that we need to copy and paste over so that piece of form knows, uh, has some semblance of an input. So last one is uh, FV solution. Oops, wrong one. Solution. And let's quit and let's go for FV solution. Now, let's take a look. Solvers are still the same. I mean, this, this will be slightly different, of course. So the results will be, again, different slightly. But other than that, as long as we have this entry here, u, k, epsilon, omega, r, n, nu, tilde, all these are the same. We don't really have to change much. So remember what we need to change. We need to change the turbulence properties. We need to add in all these other 
initial condition files for the zero oopsie zero uh, folder epsilon k q uh, new tilde nut omega all these kind of things so these are the things we'll need to copy and paste over into uh, this uh, folder right We'll need to copy and paste it into our piece of home directory in order to start running turbulence file. And then we'll need to change our turbulence properties to RAS. So let's just quickly do it now. I'm going to do something very simple. Okay, this is a Pizos foam snappy x mesh pipe. So I'm going to use the mv command to rename. That also does move the file, but renames it as well. Piece of foam snappy, oh, this is a cut and paste, right? cut and paste file or rather maybe not um, I'll not do it while it's running and I hope it does not give some kind of error excuse me we want it to run so let's uh, copy everything piece of foam snappy, uh, snappy pipe so now we'll want to uh, copy it into turbulent piece of foam snappy pipe okay so that's done quickly all right so let's let's go into turbulent uh, piece of form so this will help us you know when we want to talk about typing snappy pipe and everything at least it'll be easier to navigate to this directory so uh, we have that here all we need to do I think we can just run a simple all clean because I don't want to do anything here. Alright, so the mesh generation, everything is there. So what do we need to do? First thing first, we need to change the 0, zero folder. Right? Let's go to the 0.original file. And then we'll need to write in epsilon. Okay. And what should epsilon look like? Let's go. Very simply, press the insert button. I'm going to copy and paste everything from here and put it here. Okay, not going to change any values. It may not be physically correct, but you know, just it's just a trial run. We'll talk about how to um, put all these values in later. I'm going to quit. Oops. I num lock. Okay, that forward slash is important. We'll leave it otherwise so what's next we have epsilon already next thing we'll need to have is k new tilde nut and omega now uh, let's see whether it can do this simple trick since we have both files open this is the more efficient way to copy so cp ar this zero file a new tilde and then I'll put a dot here okay let's see oops so new tilde has been copied so nuts okay I'm gonna clear cp ar not I'll put the so I'm going to just copy multiple files in here the nut file the new tilde file so new the nut and new tilde k and omega and we'll put dot here so I've successfully copied everything over so what did I do I just uh, pasted the directory there so for example cpar then you have your first file file 1 file 2 blah 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 and then you can just put a dot there to represent hey I want to copy it here so the files were in those directories and then we just uh, put multiple entries in that uh, copy thing and that's how we copy the multiple files over very simply okay so 
Moving on. Oops. Okay, so we have transport properties, which nothing changes, but we also have turbulence properties. Turbulence properties. Now the simulation type is no longer laminar, so we'll need to uh, have the RAS entry. So this is what needs to change. So instead of that, we'll have the root RAS. Okay, so I'm going to do a double delete here. DD and enter. I'm going to save and quit using WQ, colon WQ, done. So turbulence properties has been changed. Transport properties does not need change. So we go to the last one, we go to system. And then we need to look at every schemes. So we need to copy all these entries in. Serial system. We are FV schemes. And then we'll need to copy all these in. So from phi, phi u all the way down, we'll need all this. So I'm just gonna copy this. Again, I'm not gonna talk about you know Gauss linear everything, all of these things now. I'm just gonna copy the required entries, just enough to make piece of form run doesn't need to be correct yet so all the rest so you don't need entries there you can just help the code to run uh, let's see FV solution whether we need anything I think we don't need anything but just want to double check all right so pretty much all the entries needed are here and it looks like we did not need the tolerance for entry for the P final in this case. So uh, that's all good. We should be able to run pedal foam in uh, turbulent fashion now. Uh, whether it outputs a very uh, correct physical solution, that's another matter, but we just want to do a dry run. Then we go into theory and then we talk about uh, how to help it to emulate a real system in a more correct fashion. Okay. So that's all I have for you this video. I'm just going to upload this to GitHub. Uh, I'm not going to show any video, of course, but uh, yeah. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Hope you enjoyed. Please, please leave a like and subscribe if you have found this uh, piece of foam tutorial helpful for you. Cheerio. See you again.